Alright, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Dell XPS 13 9300. So first what you're going to want to do is remove the four screws up here, then the two screws here, and then the two screws down by the hinges. Alright, so let's remove those eight screws. You want to keep these screws in order. It's a very good habit to keep the screws in order, even if they all look the same. Okay, sometimes the screws will be different size, shape, and lengths, and if you mix them up, you can actually cause damage to the computers. So I'll remove those four. Okay, I'll remove the two on the sides here. <clears throat> Alright, just like that, and then we'll remove the two down here. Alright, once you remove all these screws, what you're going to want to do is go here and between this metal frame and then the plastic or the carbon fiber palm rest, you're going to want to get some pry tools or your fingernails. Here you can see as I pull it, it's actually forming a gap. Alright, so let's go ahead and pull that apart. Let's see here. I might have to open the screen. Get some dust off of there. Alright, so let's see about opening this up here looks like this model, when you open the screen, it actually um, turns itself on. So I am going to have to shut this down. All right, make sure to shut this down um, while you have the screen open so it doesn't turn itself back on. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and pry this part open. All right, so just getting between the gap here and we are just separating the metal from the palm rest, just like this. All right, so one of the clips actually on here popped open already. So, oh, I have someone picking up a computer, so I'll be back and I'll see you in a bit. All right, so I'm back. We're gonna continue popping open this cover. All right, so just get in between. Sometimes it helps to kind of do that and then use your thumbs to push on the back just like this all right so as you can see it popped up all those clips like that we're going to go along the side here now all right same thing get in there and then push on the back with your thumb if you don't have fingernails you can try doing this with plastic pry tools but i find fingernails seem to work the best since you have a good leverage pushing with your thumb as you kind of pull back like this Okay, so just like that, we're gonna close this screen now. Here you can see we got the cover up, just lift it up just like that. And here you can see you got this connector here for the uh, headphone jack. And then the rest is just aluminum here. All right, here you can see the battery connector here. All right, and then you got two fan connectors um, it looks like there's a M SATA SSD here. I don't want to pull this out or let me see if I do, I'm going to have to remove the battery first. So then you got another speaker connector right here. Okay. So I guess that's the, is that the only speaker? No. So there's two speaker connectors, one here and then one on the other side. You got this connector here it says FP so that's probably for like fingerprint sensor let me see if on the other side if I can see anything the computer's gonna turn itself on I need to make sure to shut it off again but um here you can see <clears throat> um, I'm probably gonna let's see if I can remove the battery just to show and then I'll show you what the m.2 SSD looks like the wireless card is soldered to the board and it looks like the two the fans are pretty easy. There's two screws on each fan to remove. CPU is soldered to the board. You can't remove it. I'm going to shut this thing down. Okay. All right. And if you want to replace the fan, this is a new laptop. So you probably won't need this guide, at least not for a while. Um, but the model number is 722KK. That's the battery model. All right. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and we are going to go ahead and remove the screws for the battery. All right, so we'll leave that out and it looks like we're going to need a PH0 screwdriver. So there's one screw down in this corner here. 
gonna remove that. Again, keep the screws in order because they are, they can be different size, shape, and lengths. All right, and there's one screw down here. They actually label on the battery what the screws are, M1.6, 2.5L. I think the 1.6 is um, how thick it is, and then 2.5 is the length, but yeah. Anyways, we're going to remove these screws. Oops, let's zoom out a little more. Okay, so I'll remove that screw as well. This screw as well. Right, I don't want to do too much on this because this is a customer computer and I don't want to risk damaging things that don't need to be messed with. Okay, then we got this one screw in the center. It's kind of weird, it's so flexible there. Be careful removing that. All right, so once we got all of those, we should be able to lift the battery out unless we missed a screw. Okay, it looks like it's coming up. And then you got the battery connector here. So to remove the battery connector, usually what I do, let me see if there's a lip on this one. Nope, there's no lip. So there's just this little um, square or rectangle piece there. So what you wanna do is you find a screwdriver that will fit there. Maybe the T5 will work. Yep, so you can use the T5 screwdriver and you can use that to kind of go in that little square and help push the connector out. It might be a little tough. Sometimes it helps to kind of wiggle the connector left and right like this. I don't know if you can see, but that actually caused the battery connector to move. So if you wiggle it out as you kind of use this to pull on it, then the battery connector should come out relatively easily. You just have to slowly work it side to side and it will eventually pop out. So just like that, there we go. And there we go, we got the battery connector out and that's how we remove the battery. All right, so I'm gonna switch now to a PH1 or JIS1 screwdriver. Um, usually after you disconnect the battery, what you wanna do is open up the computer, press and hold the power button for about 10 to 15 seconds. This will drain any power from the computer so that there's less chance you'll damage the motherboard or the logic board, all right. All right, this is mostly important if you're messing with the um, LCD or LVDS connector or the screen cable. Um, but in this case, because the computer turns itself on, you wanna be very careful and remove that anyways. So here you got the keyboard connector that plugs to this board here. You can see this connector um, looks to be the keyboard backlight connector that plugs to this board as well. And then you got this connector that goes from that board to the motherboard. So all this, the keyboard, everything connects to the motherboard using this one cable. And there's also this cable, oops, sorry, that goes down here for these LEDs on the front. And this is all connecting to the main board with that cable. Then you got the trackpad connector here, or the touchpad connector. And then you got the wireless antennas on the sides here. Um, and it looks like that's pretty much all there is to do here. The screen cable is interesting, it's right here. Um, I don't wanna mess with that, I've never seen that kind of connector before. Um, or actually, it looks like this is just a metal bar bracket that goes on top, and then there's two separate um, connectors that can pop up. I don't wanna mess with that again because this computer is not dead. Um, but anyways, we're gonna remove the M.2 SSD. I'm pretty sure it's PCIe NVMe, but there's just the one screw there we're gonna remove. All right, and then it looks like this piece goes up very slightly and then you can slide it back just like this. And you wanna be careful because it is routed with the wireless antenna there. Um, so I'm gonna rotate this to try and get the wireless antenna out of it. Here we go, just like that. There is a thermal pad on top, which looks kind of thin here. They don't put much, but um, here you go. This is the PCIe NVMe SSD. It's under here, you just lift it up slightly. And then once you got it lifted up, you can go ahead and pull this back. So there's another thermal pad on the bottom here. And yeah, so this is this is a Western Digital, but you can use any. This is a one terabyte PCIe NVMe SSD. So I don't know why anyone would upgrade this. I guess you can put a two terabyte. They might, I think they have also four terabyte of these models. Um, but yeah, you're gonna have to like search for it because they're a little bit hard to find those larger capacities. Anyways, we're gonna get this, thread it back in. 
Okay. If you're going to do this, make sure you get the wireless antennas back threaded under. Be careful not to touch underneath because again, there's the thermal pad there and you don't want to get that all covered with grease or your fingerprints. All right, we are going to have to slide this back. Get that in the little notch of that little circle there again. Just like this, line it up, put that in place, get the screw back, and we'll tighten this back in place. All right, so push this cable back down, just like this. All right, if you messed with that, make sure that these cables do pop back in place, okay? It does have these little clips that hold it down. All right, so now we're gonna put the battery back in and hopefully everything should be good. There's not much else you can do in here. I'm pretty sure the RAM is all soldered. There's not much to do inside this. Get that connector lined up. Pinch the two pieces together, just like this. All right, it should go flush again. And then just get the battery lined up. We'll switch back to the PH0 or JS0 screwdriver. Okay, we'll tighten the screw back down here. Is that using a PH1? No, okay. Hmm. That screw's kind of... I guess it's because it flexes a bit. So you want to be careful with screwing this back in. Okay. And we'll get the other two screws here. All right, and if your computer wasn't turning on, you can try doing that. Also try pressing and holding the power button for uh, 10 to 20 seconds, and then try and turn it back on after doing that. Um, but yeah, usually uh, if it's like a temporary, I don't know why it was having that issue. Maybe it was a temporary short or something. So sometimes after removing the battery and then pressing and holding the power button, it will fix that issue. All right, anyways, to put this back, same thing. You want to put the hinge side slightly at an angle like this. All right, and then let it slowly drop back down. Make sure everything is lining up right because right now it doesn't want to just fall into place. All right, you don't want to force it back down. You want to make sure that it's slowly falling into place like before because when we took this off, it wasn't that difficult. So make sure you get these, the back clips here, sorry, the back clips here in first. All right, and then once you get those clips in, it looks like everything else just falls down and it just goes into place easily. All right, so if you want now, you can test, make sure it turns back on. You're probably gonna have to plug in the power adapter. So let's see if it turns on. Okay, it looks like it's good. It turns on a lot faster before it was having some issues and it was starting up slowly. So it looks like it's good now. We're just gonna put back all the screws. I'm gonna wait, make sure Windows starts up. But while it's doing that, I can actually start putting in screws. Okay. But that's pretty much all there is to it. So hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like and subscribe. Help others find my videos. Thank you for watching. You're welcome to stay till the end. I'm just going to put back all the screws. Oops, I'm putting it upside down right now. So let's flip this back over. Okay, wait for that. The thing is resetting. As you can see, it's taking a while to start up. Must be initializing some stuff. And it's always a good idea once you get your computer working again to just do a regular like restart. So I'll show you in a bit, just the regular restart option, not a shutdown. Okay, so here you can see it's saying uh, warning time of day not set up. That's because we did reset the battery connector. So we are going to have to set that back up. Um, I'm gonna put back all the screws first just so it's easier. And then I'm gonna have to check the date and time. And then I will do that real quick. All right, get all these screws back in. All 
All right, so we've got all the screws back in. I am going to have to check the date and time. I don't have my, my phone is doing the recording right now, so I am probably gonna have to pause the recording to check what the actual date and time it is. So here it says to run the setup, so you can go to the BIOS setup at the, the center one. All right, and then in here we can set the date and time. Let me check what it is real quick. 1238, March 11th. Okay, so March 11th, 1238. So we're gonna go in here. Let's see, where is it? Um, hmm. System configuration, okay. So it's in the system configuration option. So let's see, March. I guess I have to do it like this. Can I type it? No, that's weird. I have to use this. Okay, I can type it. Okay, March. Wait, sorry, let me check again. March 11th, 1239. Okay, March 11th, 2021. And then it is 1239. And it is AM. So 12 hour, 1239. All right, so we're just going to apply the changes here. All right, are you sure? Okay, let's save the settings. And then we're just going to exit. It says zero changes were made, but all, cause all we changed was the time, March 11th, 2021, 1239 AM. And then we're just going to exit this and hopefully it's just going to boot up. All right, come on, do your thing. There you go. So it's loading windows and that's pretty much it. So again, hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like, and subscribe help others find my videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. All right. Oh, that other thing I was talking about. So I'm going to hold this off to the side because I don't want to show the username. But uh, so of course here it will show that. Just press the power thing and then click restart. So you want to always, re oops, you always want to restart the computer one time before um, before using it just in case because hardware changes were made when you move things around and then make sure it boots up properly. All right, so let's see that. All right, and it looks like it's good to go. So again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.